Welcome everybody to the second quarter San Diego Foundation investment update. We have quite a bit to talk about today, as you've probably seen the first six months of this year have been extremely choppy for the markets. And one thing to note, for the last six months, for the first time in many years, we have experienced the stock market uh, falling precipitously with the bond market also falling at the same time. Typically in times of stress for the stock market, you tend to see bonds appreciate as people rush to safety uh, while stocks are falling. And that has not been the case. Uh, most diversified portfolios rely on primarily stocks and bonds for diversification. And so that diversification has not worked for the first six months of this year. What's causing this volatility? Well, clearly there is concern in the market about inflation. And as we've seen, inflation prints have been uh, the highest they've been in a number of years. Uh, the Federal Reserve is in the process of raising short-term interest rates. That is the tool they tend to utilize to combat high inflation. And as rates are going up on the short term, that means things like mortgages are getting more expensive, which is slowing down the housing market. Um, borrowing for companies gets more expensive. Um, and so we've really had this um, struggle in the market between the Federal Reserve and inflation and a lot of uncertainty around whether the Federal Reserve can avoid a recession, um, raising short-term interest rates um, and combating inflation. Uh, so it's been volatile. Um, it's never fun to talk about negative numbers and that's what we're going to have to talk about today. Um, I will say on a relative basis to our peers and to our benchmarks, uh, most of our portfolios are performing quite well. Uh, but that said, uh, the numbers are negative. Uh, to Not to end uh, the macroeconomic update on such a sour note, uh, we're showing you returns through June 30th. Note that the market has rebounded and did rebound in the month of July. It rebounded uh, quite a bit. And it's been mixed here in uh, the month of August. Uh, nonetheless, the pain has temporarily stopped. Um, no one knows where we go from here, uh, but it's safe to say that the type of diversification that we offer, in addition to just traditional stocks and bonds, uh, has allowed our donors to fare better uh, during this period. So let's start with reviewing the endowment portfolio. Uh, as of June 30th, we had just under $745 million in assets in the endowment portfolio. Remember, because the endowment portfolio um, is our longest term portfolio, it, it has a perpetual time horizon to it, we're able to get far more diversification uh, into areas such as private real estate, private equity, private credit, and those areas uh, have so far held up better than traditional stocks and bonds. You can see here by looking at this page, um, the, the endowment portfolio was down 7.9% for the quarter and 8.8% for the year to date period, placing the one year number in negative territory. When you look out over longer term periods, three years, five years, seven years, 10 years, um, you're getting substantial rates of return that are in line with what we would expect over longer time horizons. Over shorter time horizons, um, this portfolio is correlated with the market. We own risk assets in this portfolio. And in the first six months of the year, risk assets have sold off fairly dramatically. Um, like I said, uh, fixed income, tip, uh, traditionally a safe haven, um, is something you'd expect to offset some of those losses, uh, but that was not the case here in the first six months of the year. And part of the reason that we have reduced fixed income uh, down to about 10.6% of the portfolio. 
heading into this year, we knew it would be difficult for fixed income to provide the type of diversification benefits that it has historically. So we've increased other areas of the portfolio like real estate, like real assets. Real assets tend to move in lockstep with inflation. So as inflation is going up, real assets tend to appreciate. Uh, those moves have helped to uh, protect uh, the portfolio during these times of stress. We flip to the next page. Uh, here is a snapshot of our long-term portfolio. Again, this is one of our non-endowment portfolios that really takes the most risk, is the most risky and therefore uh, should have uh, higher returns over time. Certainly during periods of stress like we're in now, um, you're going to experience negative returns and perhaps uh, more negative than you would like as this portfolio has, as you can see, 48% in stocks, 15% um, in real assets, 21% in hedge funds, and close to 16% in fixed income or bonds. Uh, difficult quarter as bonds fell, equities fell. Um, real assets, while they typically move in lockstep with inflation and had performed quite well heading into this second quarter, um, also fell during the quarter. And fortunately, we had some hedge funds which are designed to provide um, capital preservation during tough periods. And those hedge funds held up fairly well uh, with minimal losses for the quarter in the year-to-date period. This portfolio over longer periods of time, you can see in that five to 6% range, um, certainly we'd like uh, to have higher returns here over longer periods of time, but with the market volatility we've seen recently, it has acted to drag down our, our longer term numbers. So I move forward here to the medium term portfolio. Also a non-endowment portfolio. This is a moderate risk portfolio. You can see it has roughly 30% in stocks and roughly 40% uh, in uh, fixed income with another 25% in short-term fixed income. This portfolio, as you see, down 7.3%. You think, why is a moderate risk portfolio down almost as much as the endowment? Well, it's a function of losing money on both the, the stock side and the bond side, the fixed income side. Um, and that uh, really dragged down numbers for the quarter. You can see the return for the calendar year to date period down a little over 12% um, and longer term numbers in that three to three and a half percent range. The intermediate term portfolio on the next page is one of our newer portfolios. It's roughly a year and a half old, so we don't have much of a performance track record to share with you. Um, it is 100% invested in domestic bonds or fixed income. Um, clearly, the first six months of, of this year has not been a great time to be invested in fixed income. And so you see the one year return down eight and a half percent very volatile and uh, per, I don't wanna say as volatile as it can get because we know it can get worse, um, but yeah, unusual to see uh, losses out of bonds to that degree. Why has that occurred? Well, as short-term interest rates have increased, remember that bond prices and interest rates have an inverse relationship. So as rates go up, bond prices fall, um, and it causes capital depreciation in bonds. Next page is the short-term portfolio um, invested entirely in money market funds. Um, you see a positive return of 20 basis points for the quarter. Um, that is good news. Why is that good news? Well, you see uh, essentially a 0% rate of return for all of the previous quarters going back to the beginning of COVID-19. Uh, as short-term interest rates rise, money market yields 
are highly correlated to those short-term interest rates. And so money market yields rise. So the good news here is as the Fed is raising short-term interest rates, we would expect for this portfolio to begin um, yielding more, certainly more than zero, um, but more than it has for the immediate past. Um, now with inflation at 9%, um, you know, earning 20 basis points a quarter on this portfolio on a real basis, you are still losing money. Um, cash is probably not a great um, investment instrument at this time, but we know that uh, at a minimum, um, you this portfolio can protect your capital from capital depreciation. The next page we shift to our sustainable portfolios and we start with our sustainable endowment portfolio. Though the sustainable endowment and sustainable non-endowment portfolios are really invested the same way. So I'm gonna talk about them um, here all at once. Uh, it has been a very tough start to the year for the sustainable portfolios. In the first quarter, um, stocks did not fall a lot, but they fell. And if you look at the S&P 500 as a barometer for stocks and kind of look under the hood as to what worked and what didn't work from a sector perspective, there were only two sectors in the S&P 500 that were positive. The first was utilities. It was up very marginally. The second was energy and energy stocks were up well over 30% for the first quarter. Uh, why? There's some correlation to inflation in the energy market, and we also had a shock to the system from the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Now, this portfolio um, follows environmental, social, and governance criteria, and it takes the environmental piece one step further by divesting from fossil fuels. So in this particular case, energy stocks were up 39, 30 something percent in the first quarter. This portfolio had no energy stocks by design. It is a values-based portfolio. And as a result, it had a very, very difficult first quarter. Um, it had a difficult second quarter though it was able to outpace its benchmark. Um, but not a good time to divest from energy when it's one of the only things that is working in the market. Really the same to be said about the sustainable non-endowment portfolio. Numbers are very similar. Uh, lost money in stocks, haven't had that diversification in the energy area because we divest from energy stocks. Lost money on the fixed income side and this sleeve of real assets is really the only thing uh, that has been working. So it is a very volatile time uh, for the markets. We recognize that we're working hard to protect capital during these down periods. Um, and uh, we are long-term investors and we recognize there will be a time when markets do appreciate again um, and we'll be ready for that as well. Uh, given the uncertainty, if you do have any questions about your investments at, this, at San Diego Foundation, please feel free to reach out to your donor manager. Um, they can put uh, you in touch with me, and I'd be happy to spend some time with you uh, walking through any questions that you may have. Thanks so much and look forward to chatting with each of you soon.